As humans, we're just fascinated by stories about disappearances. And in our fast-moving, unpredictable world, there are a lot of stories about exactly that. So prepare to get lost in these tales and expect the unexpected. From a guy who survived 27 days in the wild, to a teenager who survived over two and a half months lost at sea. Let's meet 15 missing people who were eventually found. <sighs> Number 15. Josie Ginsberg. Generally speaking, if you're unfortunate enough to get lost in the Amazon rainforest, you're probably not going to make it out alive. I'm sorry to give you that kind of harsh truth, but honestly, you should probably already know that. Real life like the classic family movie Harry and the Hendersons. That one's for the real Bigfoot fans out there. I got you, man. In 1981, Israeli backpacker Yossi Ginsberg was traveling through South America when his dream vacation took an unfortunate turn. Fresh out of military service, Ginsberg decided to trek through the rainforest. <laughs> hoping to emulate his literary heroes. What happened next was pretty horrific. For three weeks, Ginsberg survived near drowning, venomous snakes, starvation, and extreme pain. And yes, he did somehow live to tell the tale. Somehow. Apparently, Ginsberg is one of only a handful of people who have gotten lost in the rainforest and lived to talk about it. Which is kind of the ultimate flex when you think about it. After being confronted by venomous snakes, starvation, and general pain. To survive in the wilderness for 27 days after being confronted by venomous snakes, starvation, and general pain? That's not just luck, it's almost unthinkable. Maybe superheroes really do exist. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Aldi Adelang. How long do you think you could survive lost at sea on a floating fish trap? An hour? A week? 77 years and 4 months? These are probably unrealistic, but 19-year-old Aldi Novel Adelang actually managed to survive for 49 days in that situation. And yes, it's an absolutely true story. Adelang was living on the fish trap when the rope anchoring it in place broke. An intense wind blew him over 1,200 miles away into Japanese waters, where he ended up floating adrift for almost two months. And once again, this was a fish trap. That means there was no steering and no controls of any kind, which, let's be honest, is an absolute nightmare of a situation to find yourself in. According to Adelang, he survived by catching fish and drinking seawater that he filtered through his shirt. That's some MacGyver business. Apparently, over 10 ships sailed past before Adelang was able to eventually be rescued on August 31st. After receiving medical attention, he was transferred to Japan and finally back home to Indonesia, where he was reunited with his family. Tolong, tolong. Mereka cuma langgar. Pake mm -hmm. So I guess this wasn't the kind of cruise your grandparents would want to experience, unless they were totally insane. Number 13. Lisa Theris the company you keep says a lot about you. And for Lisa Theris, it didn't say good things. This 25-year-old radiology student was an unpredictable young woman with some terrible friends. But her disappearance turned out to be one of the strangest and most incredible stories you'll ever hear. Because of her unpredictable personality and bipolar disorder, Theris's family believed that her disappearances were all just a result of an impulse to follow that bad crowd she had befriended. But a missing person investigation turned up almost nothing except for two suspects. Anything further than right in front of me, I couldn't see at all. It was very blurry. Both wanted in connection with a robbery. They gave conflicting stories, claiming she had jumped out of their truck or had been killed. 
the truth was stranger. The investigation went on for a month until Lisa was finally pronounced dead. Then just two days after her legal death, Lisa stumbled out of the trees and collapsed on the road in front of local driver Judy Garner. Lisa was completely naked, sunburned, riddled with insect bites and weighed less than 50 pounds. According to her, she survived by eating the mushrooms and berries and drinking the muddy stream water she could find. If all of that doesn't qualify her for one of these Bear grill shows, I don't know what does. Number 12. Amanda Eller you're probably thinking there are worse places to be lost than Maui, but well, being lost is never a good time, and this 35-year-old woman definitely came to understand that. It's actually a miracle that she survived at all. Eller's boyfriend reported her missing on May 9th after she didn't return home from dinner. While her car was found near the trail parking lot, thousands of volunteers, police, firefighters, and search dogs began a manhunt within the thick forest nearby but nothing was found. Soon Eller's friends and family were losing hope entirely, until 17 days later, a miracle occurred. Um, that I knew were digging into my skin, but I didn't have another choice. Somehow Amanda Eller had survived the ordeal, but it wasn't easy. Eller said she had gotten lost trying to find her car, but soon had to take action when she realized just how lost she was. Eller slept in a boar's den covered in ferns, and ate wild fruit and moths for sustenance to survive. So it really wasn't a vacation. Of course, we didn't mention that she also fell 20 feet and broke her leg on the third day. Yeah, she did all of this in two weeks with a broken leg. I believe that is the definition of the word hero. Number 11. Michelle Whittaker it's one thing to go missing for a few weeks, but a six-year period of disappearance is pretty terrifying for anybody. The story of Michelle Whittaker is basically a horror story, but it thankfully has a happy ending. On August 16, 2002, Michelle Whittaker was seen alive for the last time. She didn't like the way I was leading my life. I wasn't doing the nicest of things like drinking and sleeping in cars. A friend, who was later ruled out as the suspect, dropped her off at a South Carolina truck stop before driving away. Investigators tracked her credit report and social security for years, but there was no activity following her disappearance. Then one month after Michelle's disappearance, one of her co-workers went missing, believed to have been murdered by her boyfriend, Jonathan Vick. Believing Vick to be the kidnapper, the case turned into a homicide investigation, and in 2005, police received an anonymous letter claiming that she had been murdered and her body buried. However, an investigation into those claims proved the untrue. The case went cold again. Then in 2008, reality TV came to change everything. An Oregon woman watching Forensic Files was shocked to see the claim that Jonathan Vick killed Michelle Whittaker because Whittaker was her neighbor. Police quickly confirmed this to be the case, with Whittaker explaining that she just wanted to start a new life. I guess going missing definitely allows you to do that. Number 10. Angelica Guidon Life as a fisherman must be kind of strange. Sure, most of your job consists of catching fish, but you also find yourself having some unusual encounters on the open seas from time to time. Like, for instance, discovering women who have been missing for two years hanging out on the open ocean. That's exactly what happened when this fisherman discovered Angelica Guidon. After spotting what they believed to be a log floating in the sea off the coast of Colombia, fisherman Ronaldo Visbal decided to investigate further. It turned out that it wasn't a log at all, but 46-year-old Angelica got on. A woman who had been missing from her family for two years. Angelica had fled an abusive relationship, spent a while living on the streets, and ultimately attempted to end her life. Angelica later credited her survival to God, explaining that he did not want me to die. And it's hard to dispute that, somebody up there is definitely looking out for her. Angelica's story is bittersweet, but she managed to survive it against all the odds, and that should be celebrated. We should also be thankful fishermen exist, because because it turns out they're pretty good at finding missing people. Number 9. Sabrina Allen There's no bigger nightmare for a parent than having their child stolen away. 
for Greg Allen, this nightmare became a reality that haunted him for an unthinkable 12 years. But against all the odds, his little girl eventually found her way home. And the story is a testament to the power of community and the internet. In April 2002, four-year-old Sabrina Allen went for a scheduled weekend visit with her non-custodial mother, Dara. At the end of the weekend, she was never returned to her father, Greg. For 12 long years, Greg never gave up the hope that his daughter would one day be returned, alive and well. But nothing happened until Greg hired a private investigator and set up a website for people to submit tips. An informant had provided information claiming that Sabrina was no longer in her native Texas, but was with her mother in Mexico. Local officials worked with the private investigator and, sure enough, found the pair hiding out in a small apartment in Tlaxcala. Sabrina's mother was immediately taken to jail for kidnapping, and Greg was finally reunited with his now 17-year-old daughter. So at least we get a happy ending for father and daughter. Mom, not so much, but you know, that's what you get for kidnapping. Number 8. Richard Wayne Landers Jr. Custody battles rarely turn out well for any family, but if the child vanishes halfway through? Well, things are really not going to turn out well. That's what happened to Richard Wayne Landers Jr., a toddler who was abducted by his grandparents. Didn't see that one coming, did ya? Richard had actually lived with his grandparents since the day he was born, but the real-life changing incident came in July 1994 when a dispute between Richard's mom and his grandparents over the young boy's custody turned nasty. Concerned that his unemployed mother was living in a car, Richard's grandparents took the rather extreme step of abducting their grandson and fled town. Of course, the grandparents did what they did for an understandable reason, but that doesn't make it right. After fleeing town, the pair changed their names and set out to live a quiet life with their grandson. Investigators desperately sought them out, but the case went cold in 2008. To anybody who wanted to find him, Richard was gone, without a trace. Then in 2013, almost two decades after the initial disappearance, Richard Wayne Landers Jr. was finally discovered living in Indiana under an assumed name. Investigators confirmed his identity and put him in touch with his mother. Well, at least there's a happy ending to the story. Number 7. Steve Carter I think we're all old enough to admit that we've Googled ourselves, yeah? Some of us more than others. I'm sure we've all been there. But how many of us have Googled our names and discovered we're on a missing person's website? That, uh, that one is less relatable. Steve Carter knew that he had been adopted at the age of four, but he had a whole bunch of questions about his childhood. Who were his real parents and why was his birth certificate created a year after he was born? It was, uh, it was the day Carlina White had found herself online. She was uh, an 18-year-old woman out of New York. Turns out that a quick Google search answered none of those questions at all. Actually, it raised more. The now 35-year-old Steve read a story about a woman who discovered she was snatched from a hospital as a baby. After doing some digging, Steve found himself on a missing kid's website and discovered that what they would look like now photo for one child was him. Steve's digging led him to discover that his mother had left him in state care with a fake name and birth date before disappearing, never to be found again. While he'll likely never meet his mother, Steve was finally reunited with his father and the family that he never knew about. So I guess Google changes lives. There's another threat for when the computers turn sentient. Number 6. Carlos Sanchez Ariz de Salazar Depression could never be underestimated or dismissed, and the story of Carlos Sanchez Oriz de Salazar is just another example of why that's such an important point. In 1997, Carlos was going through a tough battle against depression when he disappeared into thin air for almost two decades. Carlos's family were obviously concerned and worried when they hadn't heard from him for over a decade. The radio silence lasted so long that authorities declared him legally 
dead. Then in 2015, two mushroom pickers working outside Tuscany happened to stumble upon a homeless looking man hanging around a camp in the woods. When they returned with a forest ranger, Carlos introduced himself and explained that he had lived there since 1997 and was hoping to get back to normal life. After verifying his story, the foragers contacted the authorities who confirmed his identity and put him in touch with his family. Carlos's story is a pretty sad one, but at least it has a happy ending. And again, it makes an important point that mental health should be taken seriously and that those suffering through it should not be expected to do so alone. Or to use a fitting metaphor, sometimes you need help to get out of the woods. Number 5. Sean Hornback Sean Hornbeck's parents had been through hell. For four long years, they were led to believe that their beloved 11-year-old son had been taken from them, never to be seen again. And then, finally, a miracle occurred. Against all the odds, the police managed to locate him. And the story is pretty weird. In October 2002, 11-year-old Sean was riding his bike in Missouri, like any other day. But it wasn't an ordinary day, sadly. This was the day that Sean was kidnapped and held in the tiny one-bedroom apartment he'd call home for the next four years. Police investigations led nowhere. The family's search ran cold pretty quickly. Then in 2007, police investigating Ben Ownby's kidnapping found Sean inside the small apartment of 41-year-old pizza shop boss Michael Devlin. Basically what I did, sleep or watch TV or play video games. Finally free of his captor, Sean was reunited with the family he had been cruelly taken away from. Naturally, his parents were thrilled to have him back, having never given up hope that they would see him again. Having your child taken away from you in any situation is a deeply traumatic and heartbreaking thing. But to have absolutely no answers for such a long time only makes things worse. Thankfully for everyone involved, Sean wasn't harmed and the family were reunited forever. Number 4. Richard Hoagland We all know the old deadbeat dad cliché from the sitcoms, right? He goes out for a pack of cigarettes, he marries some Vegas floozy, has a kid, goes for another pack of cigarettes, and so on. Turns out that that's not totally fictional. In the case of Richard Hoagland, that was life. When Douglas Hoagland was just six years old, he had the family life anyone could dream of. Wonderful parents, a happy home life, full bellies. Then his father, Richard, just disappeared. While his family struggled over the next two decades, Richard had remarried, bought property, and had another son, and was using the name of a dead man. Then in 2016, Florida police finally arrested him on identity theft charges. 23 years on from the day he walked out on his family, Richard appeared in court and had to face the son he abandoned. He has a child with his third wife. They have no idea about his previous life. The court ordered him to pay almost $2 million in back child support. Richard's disappearance had a tragic impact on Douglas, leaving deep emotional scars that are likely responsible for his long-term drug abuse. But as is often the case, Richard never really had to deal with the fallout from that. Now, however, he has $2 million of fallout to deal with. And that's karma in action, baby. Number 3. Winston Bright and next up in our Disappearing Dad double feature, we have Winston Bright. But obviously, this isn't just gonna be another stereotypical father leaves and comes back type of story. This one has a pretty unusual twist, actually, and you get to decide what actually happened. In October 1990, Winston Bright prepared for another ordinary day at work. He said goodbye to his loving wife and three children, left the family home, and headed to New York City to work at the telephone exchange. There's just one thing, he never came back. For over a year, Winston's devastated wife worked with the NYPD to try and locate her missing husband, but it was no good. The case went cold, and a decade later, she asked the court to declare him dead so she could pick up insurance payouts and his pension. Here's where things get weird. In 2007, Winston's family got a call from a man named Kwame Seku, who claimed to be Winston. His story was that he had suffered a sudden and severe amnesia 
episode that led him to San Diego. While doctors believed it could be genuine, Winston's wife and sons didn't, and neither did the courts, who refused to give him his old identity and pension back. But what do you think? Deadbeat dad or genuine amnesiac? Let us know in the comments. Number 2. Harrison O'Keen whether you believe in a higher power or not, the story of Harrison O'Keen will definitely make you believe in miracles. This guy was put through the ringer and somehow against all the odds he lived to tell the tale of what happened on board the Jackson 4. In 2013, the Jackson 4 traveled some 12 miles off the Nigerian coast when brutal weather conditions began attacking the boat. Before long, the boat capsized completely, plunging the whole vessel into the freezing cold waters. Okin, a cook, was swept into a toilet chamber and forced to come to terms with his fast approaching fate. But somehow that never happened. For the next three days, Okin was trapped inside this tiny air bubble 98 feet below the surface of the water the only member of the crew to survive. Then, the miracle happened. Rescue divers came looking for bodies, only to discover that Okin was still somehow alive. Okin was soon pulled to the surface and put in a decompression chamber for 60 hours before finally he was reunited with his family. I say, God, the comment I made, I say, God, if you can take care of Jonah. Naturally, Okin's experience only strengthened his faith, and he continues to believe that God was the one who saved him. Whether you believe that or not, there's no denying that it's a miracle that he survived at all in these conditions. Number 1. The Cambodian Jungle Girl If you don't know anything about this story, you're in for a real treat. The so-called Cambodian jungle girl is a woman who emerged from a Cambodian jungle in 2007 with basically no explanation. What followed was a decade of competing claims that saw multiple people claiming to be her family members. Prepare for some messiness. When the jungle girl first appeared, she was filthy, naked, and scarred. And yet, she quickly became a sensation as people from all over rushed out to announce that they knew who she was. While the media ran with these sensations, sensational claim that she was a feral child. Others believed it was more complicated. One family claimed that she was their daughter, who vanished almost 20 years earlier. One 45-year-old claimed she was his long-lost daughter, but never had the DNA tests to prove it. One reporter claimed that she was held in captivity and escaped. Basically, everybody knew who she was, and also nobody agreed on who she was. What an easy-to-follow and straightforward problem this is, the story got much crazier with the girl fleeing back into the jungle at one point and later sleeping in a chicken coop. And then in 2016, a man claimed she was his missing daughter and even provided documentation and family witnesses to prove it. An investigation was inconclusive, but immigration officials reviewed the case and concluded that it was likely true. Boy, that was a journey. Did you know about any of these missing person stories? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.